The Lord be with you. Welcome to worship on this, the 11th Sunday after Pentecost, and we're in the middle of our uh, uh, preaching uh, journey through the understanding the creed through lay folk, and Jackie's our preacher today, and we're so thankful for her to be here. Uh, please offer a prayer, give her encouragement. Uh, hopefully you grabbed a bulletin on the way in, and if you're online, that you went to flcbothel.org and downloaded the uh, bulletin there, and that's where we'll find all the words that we'll be using today. Um, just a reminder that our communion table is open to all, so please come as you are. With that, let's stand now for our land acknowledgement. We acknowledge that we are on Coast Salish, Duwamish, and Stillaguamish land, the peoples who lived on this land long before the settlers. They loved, birthed, built, educated, and thrived here. We wish to live more fully into the healing of this land. As many have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Alleluia. On the first day of the week at early dawn, the women came to the tomb, taking the spices that they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they went in, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground, but the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee, that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified, and on the third day rise again. Let us pray. O God, for our redemption you gave your only Son to suffer death on the cross, and by his glorious resurrection you delivered us from the power of death. Make us die every day to sin so that we may rise to live with Christ forever who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, mighty and immortal, you know that as fragile creatures surrounded by great dangers, we cannot by ourselves stand upright. Give us strength of mind and body so that even when we suffer because of human sin, we may rise victorious through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen.
Today's psalmody is from the 103rd Psalm and will be read responsively. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless God's holy name. Bless Bless the the Lord, Lord, O my my soul, and and forget forget not all God's benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases, who redeems redeems your your life from from the grave grave, and and crowns you you with steadfast love love and mercy, who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like an eagle's, O Lord, you provide vindication and justice for all who are oppressed. You made known your ways to Moses and your works to the children of Israel. Lord, you are full of compassion and mercy, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. Today's reading is from the 23rd chapter of the Gospel of Luke, and if there are any first-time visitors, you probably need a spoiler alert. (laughs) One of the criminals who were hanged there kept deriding him and saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed have been condemned justly, for you are getting what we deserve for our deeds, but this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He replied, truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. It was now about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon, while the sun's light failed and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Then Jesus, crying with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his last. Word of God, word of life. The children are invited to come forward for a children's message. Bryce, Bryce, no, you're not gonna come up. Okay, Bryce. We're gonna have a short children's message today. Oh, thank you. He knows how hard it is to get back up. Um, So today we're going to hear a wonderful sermon by Jackie Schnari on Jesus as the Son of God. And um, I I love the fact that uh, I get to have all sorts of wonderful gifts after Vacation Bible School. This was from a few years ago. And I forget the artist name because they didn't sign the back, but this is much better than I could ever make. And crosses are just a wonderful reminder uh, for us of Jesus, God's son, uh, who gave his life on the cross for us. And uh, many of you wear jewelry or uh, have crosses hanging in your office or homes. Pastor Berg has quite an extensive collection of crosses in his office. And uh, some put little crosses in their pocket, little pocket crosses as reminders of our faith. And I love the cross behind me and the copper little shiny metal pieces, or as some have referred to them affectionately as doodads. But uh, Uh, You know, art is always in what do you, the viewer, take from it? And for me, I see uh, those little copper pieces, and I I see one that looks like Bryce, and I see one that looks like just about everyone here. And uh, 
The copper shines the light of God and the light of Jesus, God's Son. And I am encouraged by viewing that artwork behind me because it's a reminder to me of Jesus saying, go out into the world and shine the love of Jesus. Shine my love into the lives of people that you come into contact with. And so that, that's my message today is to be those little shiny objects, those mini Christs, if you will, going out into the world and, and sharing God's love to all people. Uh, let's close with a prayer. Dear God, we thank you for your extreme love, your grace, and um, we ask that you be with each of us, that as we go into the world, that we may shine your light and your love to all people. Be with us this week in all that we say and do. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I said to Tor, yes. He emailed me, said, would you be part of a lay preaching? And I said, sure, I'd be willing to do that. And as this week has come closer and closer, I'm like, what did I say yes to? Why did I say yes? I know. And one of the things that I appreciate is Tor's faith in me because he knew I would have the words. And so I'm hoping that this, I get to talk about the Apostles' Creed. And as Lloyd has talked about how God, our creator, of something so amazing and so wonderful that we just stand in awe at times. We look at God's creation and I just, I, I, you think about blood and all the things as a scientist, it just helps support that. And so God is our creator. And then as Roger shared last week about Jesus, who was born of a virgin and brought forth fully human, he knew what it was like to live in a body like mine, like ours, that aches sometimes, that bleeds sometimes. And just the heart that is there that beats. And so Christ did all of this. And I think about that we say the Apostles' Creed every Sunday, and it unites us with Christians throughout the world in a statement of what we believe. The Apostles' Creed, the Nicene Creed, the Athanasius Creed were all written at a time many centuries ago by people trying to better understand what it meant to be a Christian. And I believe our repeating of this every Sunday helps us to, to re-understand every Sunday what it means to be a believer in Christ. And it's, it's an amazing thing to think about. So as God becomes part of this trinity, as Christ becomes part of this trinity, is born, it is, reminds me of why I came to faith. I came to faith as a 20-something um, person who knew different things, and my sister was part of that, but even more was Christ's suffering. Because at a time that my sister is telling me about this amazing piece that she had found, I went to my brother's high school play, and they did Jesus Christ Superstar. And it seems a little sacrilegious, but I think for me, that was what pulled my strings even harder. Because at the end of the play, at the end of all of this, Jesus suffers. 39 times he is hit with lashes. And for me, that is 
amazing that he would suffer under Pilate in that way. This past year, Mark and I had the opportunity to see a, a big production of it. And they, as part of the emphasis, and they, you hear the sound of the lashes, they took and threw glitter at the character playing Jesus. And just what he took on as he said yes to God's plan. As Jesus, fully human, built this bridge that we now can cross to God, the chasm that cannot be built, crossed in any other way except for through the cross. And so as he suffers from, through Pilate and through the soldiers who put a crown of thorns on his head and through the spit and all the things that they did to him, he said yes. And it, I don't think I could say yes. I don't think in the face of all of that, it would be easy for me to say yes. But because God is holy human and holy God, as Christ embodies these two, he's able to. And he says yes. He says yes to what you've suffered. I will take that on. I will deal with that so that you can come and cross this chasm to be with me and my father in the end. And so it, it begs the question, at my house when we, I first started talking about this, Benjamin, my oldest, he's going to turn 20 in a few days, well, in a couple of weeks. And Benjamin and I were talking about the Nicene or the Nicene Creed and how he learned it in, at school. And so at a Christian school, he learns about the creeds and that they were, why they were written. And I love the history that he brought into it. And just this past Thursday, um, Mark was talking to the boys as we're all sitting after dinner around the family room. And he brings up uh, an interview he heard from Stephen Fry. And it reminded me of one that I had heard. Stephen Fry is a UK comedian and is just brilliant in the way he acts and all of that. But Stephen Fry is an atheist. And what's interesting to me is a teacher who teaches about science and gets asked the question, but why does God allow? And you fill in the blank, cancer, war, and all of this. And I wonder about that myself because the quick answer that sometimes people say, well, God gave us free will. And so we get to choose. But I'm like, I, I didn't choose to invade Ukraine, excuse. But God gave us free will. And then the other answer that still doesn't fit it is that I usually say to my students is sin entered the world. And when sin entered the world, disease entered and war and strife and all that happens. But to people, unbelievers like Stephen Fry, like people who can't believe, that are falling away from their faith, it, it's not an adequate answer. Why would God allow being omnipotent, all-powerful, why would he allow this? And I don't have the answer, and I'm not going to try to answer it because that's beyond my pay grade. Um, it's beyond my education, but it's one of those things that I still think about, is why would God allow fill in the blank? So, but it always comes back to me, my faith. I tell my students when I teach, is my faith supports my, my scientific understanding and my scientific understanding supports my faith. I tell them to think about the time that they broke an arm or got a cut and how, look at it, and it's healed and it's amazing. And so I think about God and all of that. Our creed, the Apostles' Creed, helps to remind us what we believe that we believe in a creator that is bigger than anything we could ever imagine. The Christ, born of a virgin. Sometimes I have a hard time with that, but born of, the, of a virgin. Taking on humanity, taking on his humanness. Suffered amazing things. And he died 
But that's not the end of the story. And that's what's so awesome, is the story doesn't end at a death. It ends three days later with his rising, finishing that work of building that bridge of the chasm that we can't cross. He laid down his life and gives us hope. And he gives us peace. Because the last part of my coming to faith story is a man sitting right there who walked on a three-hour walk on our second date. And he just has this peace that I'd been searching for. Mark just walked alongside of me, and I was like, this is what I'm looking for. Because the world out there is full of trash. And it's full of things that just pull on us in all sorts of directions. But I saw the peace that passes human understanding. And that peace that Christ brings that we talk about every Sunday. Every Sunday we get to be reminded that God gives us peace. And that rest in that peace so that we can go out and be the light shining for others. So what we believe in is something that is beyond our understanding. And I, it, I tell my students that I've got a list of things like, why mosquitoes, God? Why did you make mosquitoes? Really, mosquitoes? I know it's food for animals, but really? This list that, as I get older, means less. But I have this list of questions. God, why did you? And I have the peace. So, and that peace comes not only from Christ and his belief, but through the Holy Spirit in the belief that the Holy Spirit brings. And don't want to step on Kendall's toes, so I'm not going to. But those three pieces, Christ, God, the creator, Christ, not only fully human, but fully God, and the Holy Spirit that comes together, that helps remind us who we are. And not only who we are, but whose we are because we are God's children, brought together through Christ, and we will be able to walk across that chasm and be accepted. Thank you for letting me share. I hope it has blessed you. Amen. The word amen can mean a lot of things. Uh, it could just mean yes. Amen can mean let it be. Uh, but also am, amen can be I'm with you, sister. We're with you, sister. Let's stand and sing thine the amen. Amen, thine the praise, hallelujah's angels raise, thine the everlasting head, thine the breaking of the bread, thine the glory, thine the story, thine the harvest, then the crop, thine the vineyard, then the crop is lifted up, lifted up. Thine the life eternally, thine the promise, let there be. Thine the vision, thine the tree, all the earth on bended knee. On the kneeling, on the railing, on the pleading, on the cry. On the sighing, on the dying, what was lost, lifted on. Thine the truly, thine the yes, thine the table, we the guest. Thine the mercy, all from thee, thine the glory yet to be. Then the ringing and the singing and the end of all the war. Thine the living, thine the loving, evermore, evermore. 
Thine the kingdom, thine the prize, thine the wonderful surprise. Thine the banquet, then the praise, then the justice of thy ways. Thine the glory, thine the story, then the welcome to the least. Then the wonder of all reason at thy face, at thy face. Thine the glory in the night, no more dying, only light. Thine the river, thine the tree, and the Lamb eternally. Thine the holy, holy, holy celebration to believe. Thine the splendor, thine the brightness, only thee, only thee. Let us now affirm our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Trusting in God's extraordinary love, let us come near to the Holy One in prayer. You crown your church with steadfast love and mercy. Guide us continually in our baptismal covenant to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. Use our diverse gifts in service to the whole people of God. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You satisfy the needs of all creatures. Protect the habitats of fish and birds, such as the Kenmore Heron Rookery, the Upper Chenault Ravine, and the Beaver Lodge Sanctuary. Repair ecosystems damaged by misuse, neglect, or natural disaster, that all creation may thrive. Merciful God, you make your ways known to all people. Inspire the rulers and leaders of nations with your compassion and mercy. Raise up activists and community organizers to restore places affected by violence, poverty, and inequity. Merciful God, you provide justice for all who are oppressed and relief to all who are afflicted. Heal those who are bent over by addiction, depression, and, and, and anxiety. Set free all who cry out under the weight of mental, emotional, or physical distress. Merciful God, you call us to delight in the Sabbath. Renew our bodies, minds, and spirits in this worshiping assembly. Give rest to all who lead our congregation in worship, study, and service. Merciful God, for whom do the people pray? Generations bless your holy name. We give you thanks for the communion of saints who have gathered in prayer and praise in this place. Support us in your love until we rest forever in you. Merciful God, receive, our prayer. receive the prayers of your children, merciful God, and hold us forever in your steadfast love. Through Jesus Christ, our holy wisdom. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. 
return and share that peace with one another. You may be seated. We'll receive our offering at this time, and uh, we thank you all for your generosity. And for those online, you can go to go to uh, the web page and click on the donate button. Thank you. Please stand as you are able. Could it be that we are called for such a time as this? Could it be that we are called for such a time as this? Could it be that we are called for such a time Let us pray. God of abundance, you have set before us a plentiful harvest. As we feast on your goodness, strengthen us to labor in your field and equip us to bear fruit for the good of all. In the name of Jesus, amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and grace. Holy, living, and loving God, we praise you for creating the heavens and the earth. We bless you for bringing Noah and his family through the waters of the flood, for freeing your people, Israel, from the bonds of slavery, and for sending your Son to be our Redeemer. We give you thanks for Jesus, who living among us healed the sick, fed the hungry, and with a love stronger than death, gave his life for others. The night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. 
Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his life-giving death and his glorious resurrection, we await your promised life for all this dying world. Breathe your spirit on us and on this bread and cup. Carry us in your arms from death to life that we may live as your chosen ones, clothed in the righteousness of Christ. Through him, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. In Christ's presence there is fullness of joy. Come to the banquet. I invite you to be seated as I invite our servers to come forward. Please know that we serve bread, but if you desire a gluten-free option, just let me know. Also, we serve red wine and white grape juice. Mercy on all, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace, grant us Drink 
drink of the blood of the Lamb. I come with joy, a child of God, forgiven, loved, and free. The life of Jesus who recall, in love laid down for me, in love laid down for me. I come with Christians far and near to find as all are fit, a new community of love in Christ communion bread. In Christ communion bread. As Christ breaks bread and bids us share each proud division end, the love that made us makes us wine, and strangers now are friends, and strangers now are friends. The Spirit of the risen Christ, unseen but ever near, is in such friendship better known, Alive among us here, alive among us here. Together met, together bound, by all that God has done. We'll go with joy to give the world the love that makes us one. The love that makes us one. Now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen, keep, and unite us now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. Life-giving God, through this meal you have bandaged our wounds and fed us with your mercy. Now send us forth to live for others, both friend and stranger, that all may come to know your love. This we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Roger. Good morning. We'd like to remind all of you that on Sunday, September 11th, we celebrate Rally Day and uh, return to the two worship service format, 8.30 and 11 a.m. with the education hour in between. Sunday school classes, confirmation class, and adult class will begin on that Sunday, and you're all invited. And then at about 12, 12, 12, 15 that Sunday, there will be a church picnic, and there's going to be some barbecuing happening and some salads and chips. Uh, tube steaks will be grilled or hot dogs, as some refer to them. But uh, it'll be a fun, festive event that's uh, Sunday, September 11th. It will be held here, so you don't have to travel very far at all uh, in the narthex and in the front portion of the parking lot. So please look forward to that and join us. Thank you. Next Sunday is the school bag kits uh, stuffing party. Uh, so as you come into church, if you'd like to stuff some bags, you can stuff more than one. Um, they will be all set up in the narthex. People ask, what do we need most in, in the way of school supplies? And we need a little bit of everything because we are going to be sending 400 kits this time and uh, 150 kits next t in the spring, so we need some for the spring as well. We do not, however, need rulers. Um, choir is beginning on September 8th, that's a Thursday night, and we invite anybody that likes to sing. You don't have to have uh, special classical training, just come on and join us at 7 to, to 8.30 in the evening. And then we are starting a, a concert series here at First Lutheran, and it's beginning with a fun, for all ages, uh, steel band uh, group. 
and you're invited on September 25th at 3 p.m. to come in tropical attire, if you wish. Uh, just no bikinis or, or speedos. So, oh, um, anyway, um, darn. Uh, Flip-flops, Hawaiian shirts, and shorts, are, they're all uh, uh, welcome. So thank you. First, she told you to stuff it. Then now she's telling you how to dress. I don't know. That's all good. <laughs> all right, some other announcements. Uh, we put out an adult ed uh, Google Doc to, for people to um, let us know what they think about adult ed um, survey. Please uh, do that survey if you have not already. Um, some of you may remember Henry Erickson, who passed away a few years ago. His wife, Jo Erickson, passed away last week, and her memorial service will be on September 10th at 2 p.m. at Holy Spirit. If you are uh, someone who leads one of our groups or committees or task forces that need a budget, uh, please get those into uh, the finance committee uh, by the end of September. We do need volunteers for worship to le help lead worship. We need ushers, readers, uh, people who are willing to learn how to use the camera, the sound system, uh, to help le uh, do uh, or serve communion, etc. So please, uh, if you are interested in volunteering, give Chris a call or send her an email what you're interested in volunteering for. Um, did that, did that. Uh, the Synod um, it has started, last year they started a lay education program called the LIVE Project, Living into Vocational Education. And so they're starting up their year here, and uh, we are one of the congregations that we just pay a thousand bucks so that all our members can take those classes for free. So uh, look in your emails for uh, uh, opportunities to join in education and get to know some people in our synod. Um, it's a great program. If you have a qu question about it, Ho uh, has been taking classes from there, and so Ho would be glad to answer your questions. With that, let's stand and receive our blessing. she's going up there uh, I can vamp for a little bit there's been some conversations around why we're going back to two services uh, there's many answers to that question two of the most important are when we go to one service we average about a hundred 115 people on a Sunday when we go to two services we average 130 to 140 people a Sunday so you know yes it feels good to have a full house but we are excluding people from being in worship uh, when we just have the one service and they feel like they can't have room in our space and certainly parking is one of those issues. 
the other is we have people who aren't here who are a little slower getting going in the morning. 11 o'clock service is better for them. We have families who uh, need to get started with their day and with an 8.30 service they can still get to their sporting events, etc. So there's all kinds of good reasons for during the program year to go to two services. Um, we will monitor all of that as we go through the year, um, but that's, that's been our decision making on that. Did you get there? Okay, I, I'll stop talking now. So turn the page and we'll sing Blessing and Honor. Love your neighbor. 